Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the landscape challenge continues with some hay. So here we have the hay and we have to make a decision. And I've been thinking about this. I've got some comments from people online. Um, and one of my favorite comments was finally someone who said, yeah, Dave, I think you should do the long perspective, which is what you're looking at right now. It's outside of the box. It's a pot that's long. It's a penjing. I don't know if I'm breaking every single rule in the bonsai penjing world, but this is the penjing idea I had because I wanted more perspective. And here's why I think it has to be this way. I've got these bigger trees here, these poplar. Oh, incidentally, look at these uh, inch growth of leaves already. <laughs> There's also some green on a couple of the Zelkovas. So it's fun to have them wake up here in the plant room. We'll have to make sure we take really good care of them when we bring it outside. But the trees are bigger up here, and then I have them going downhill here for some perspective down the way, right down here, these little tiny ones, right? These are maybe all similar height, but the perspective here, and there's this great big tree out in the middle of the field. The problem with this side is the two roads, and it kind of changes the perspective, and here's the problem with this side. I've got a big tree up here, and the same tree, if not a little bit bigger back here, and it's too short to give really forced perspective, unless this was really huge and this was really small, and I cut these all down back here even more. But I left them tall for a reason because I like this perspective of it coming down here. Now my challenge with the perspective also was the hay. Now this mohawk, mohawk of a hay bale here is really, really huge, right? Well, never fear, I'm gonna be trimming it up, right? I just put the glue on last time, it's in holding in good place. So I have to figure out how the hay is gonna go because it's only gonna be in part of the field. I mean, I could do a hay on the whole field, but that would be so much work. I just have too many other things going on this spring, including the house renovation, which we'll update you on too, um, or maybe this show. Um, I, have to, I have to limit this. Not to mention the fact that I don't know if I want to put uh, six, seven, eight more rows of about a uh, hundred, uh, yeah, raffia on here. So here's the challenge with the perspective. If I were to have it this way, I thought I'd have some hay here, and then this is going to be the collected hay, and yep, I have some mini hay bales in mind, and we're going to have some hay bales. So this will be the stuff that's still going on that the farmer has to continue to harvest, and this is going to be all into the hay bales already, uh, spurned throughout the uh, field here, laid out throughout the field where people see it as they drive by. But again, I really want this to be the primary perspective, just to, again, think outside the box, be a little different. Now, if I have this hay way back here, this is monstrous hay if this is a huge tree, right? So, of course, we're going to cut it down really, really short. But if I have it up here, I would actually have to have it bigger here and smaller back here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I have enough to put a little strip right here between the trees and the, um, the um, big oak tree here, oak tree, and then I'll cut off the extra and I'll put it back here. And this will be really tiny off into the distance, tiny into the distance. And then this part right here will be the part that the farmer already uh, um, harvested and we'll have the hay bales go in this direction right here, okay? So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna see where I cut this to make the final fitting here, and whatever's left over will be here. It might be half and half. So let's get my scissors out, and let's put in some hay. Okay, we have the hay, and the hay is gonna be here. These rocks will be gone. They're just holding down the trees right now, and they're, uh, they're bursting at the seams there, so they're doing okay. If I put the hay here, and I want to put it at the edge here so you can actually see the uh, hay bales on that side. So if I do it there, that means I cut it about the road, which would be somewhere right there. So if I go ahead and cut this, I'm cutting by the uh, the uh, glue now, and it's not coming 
quite as easy. All right, there we go. Now we have two stacks of hay. So this one is going to go here, I believe, right up to the right up to the road. And this is the extra one that's going to be on this side because there's some uh, hay over here as well. Now this has to be the taller hay and this has to be the smaller, shorter hay. Now, in order to do this, I talked about having rolling hills in my landscape and it's just too small of a pot. Again, if I had a bigger pot to work with, I think I could show some more rolling hills. That'll be really hard with this plastic bottom here. What I want to make sure I do is have this nice and flat, as flat as I can have it. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add a little bit of my smalls on top of the mediums here. And I'm just going to use the white because this won't um, hold as much water as the Akadama would. And we're just going to lay this so it kind of gives us that flat look right here. And then this sits pretty good right there. Just like that. And of course, I probably could wire this in like we wire some of our trees, but I think we're just going to leave it there. So, to make this a little bit more user friendly right from the get go, let's go ahead and give it its first haircut. I should have the big blue loppers of Mr. Nigel Saunders in the Bonsai Zone. This brings me back to a summer short I made with uh, Blue Jay Bonsai. Stuff flying everywhere. He wanted to trim my tree. Day four of the epic 2022 bonsai journey. I'm at the bonsai zone. I'm in the bonsai zone, the greenhouse. It's hot, it's sticky, the trees are loving it. But you know what? We're going to go out in nature and see where all these trees really are living, right? We've got some friends that are going to join us. Super excited to meet some more people. As a matter of fact, is that Jay from Blue Jay Bonsai? Jay, no, Nigel already did the dashboard ficus. I think we're good. But we needed a carnage cam. Oh. Now the question is, how short is short enough? How tall is tall enough to give us this idea of some hay growing out in the field? Just like when you cut a bonsai tree with raffia, we can only cut it so much. All right. Yeah, now that it's all cut, I probably should have twice as wide of a stretch here, shouldn't I? But let's peek it around this way for me. We've got some grass growing right here. Yeah, we'd be, we'd be best served if we made this doubled up, huh? But I like the idea of having some in the front and some in the back. Maybe we can add some later on. So my idea here is I left a little extra of the uh, mesh on either side. And I'm going to put some now uh, Akadama um, dust, Akadama fine, super fine in the dust. And I'm going to put that on here to kind of hold this into the, uh, the land here. I'm going to push it down into the smaller size um, pumice that I just put on there and that's laying in there pretty nice and flat and then this soil the uh, powder will just go right around that now if that is a tree a big oak tree this is probably still a little bit too on the tall side but I don't want to go too small because that's going to be the other side so we're going to go and get this a little bit shorter. And I'm not a hay farmer, so I don't know how tall it is when they chop it down. Is it four or five feet tall? Um, so if this is four or five feet tall, that makes the tree, that makes the tree about 40 feet tall. So yeah, in perspective, that could, uh, that could work. Here we go. So our time-lapse hay crop gave us this as our final product. And I definitely could have put more on here. All right, so we put this in here and we snug it in there. And there's the long stuff. 
If that's the long stuff, this has to be even shorter in the back. So let's just start cutting this one off now. Look at how fast that went down, huh? Now this one's not as big, not as long. I could have the really small short stuff, that the short stuff in the back um, because it covers more ground back there and it can be tinier but covers more ground. And I could have maybe this shorter stubbier one here or this not as dense a one. up front here, but then it doesn't look like very much uh, hay is left. Yeah. So here's the leftover stuff that they have to harvest on this side. And so, again, if I put a little bit of the white stuff here, the small pumice for a flat surface to put this on and cradle on in there so it lays as flat as possible. We get it all the way to this side where it's supposed to be. A little bit of, a, little bit of the field that they haven't harvested yet. Here we go. So let's give you a little look here. So here's the view from the car, and we've got the uh, bigger, taller grass up front and the back, smaller grass in the back. Now that back isn't s much smaller, but it is a little smaller. We might have to make this just a little bit micro smaller here. I don't know. I don't want to have to redo all this, but if I had to, of course, I maybe would. There we go. It is definitely smaller, and it's just in the background back here. Got it between all this uh, fine, fine pumice. And we can have it right here, kind of on this side, kind of level with this. And there's the field way back there. Okay. So. I like the way that that's looking. I'm going to cheat this over a little bit more so it goes through the trees that you see and we can kind of see the edge there. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my, my Akadama Fines. And here we go. This is the farm, farmland. Now I have noticed a slight problem with my road. If you all have been looking close at my road, it hasn't dried to Akadama color yet. Which means it is really holding on to that moisture. So I was thinking I might even have to make a vapor barrier between the road or underneath this road part. So this is the farmland and they've already tilled some of the farm. They've tilled some of the soil here. And of course when this gets wet it's going to turn dark. It'll look like the road so I might have to, I'm probably going to put some sphagnum moss on this. I want this to be the farm back here and I won't, I won't water this as directly. I'll water the tree in the middle and I'll water the trees on the edge, but water is going to seep through and it's going to, it already is kind of a little bit on some of this. And this is the farmland leading up to all this grass and the moss. And then sphagnum moss is going to go everywhere else. So I got my little rake here kind of knock it off here. Make sure that it kind of lays flat. I can see my white plastic thing here a little bit too much.
And then wherever there's not going to be this Akadama dust, it's going to be some sphagnum moss. So we can see this is as a farm field. So right now this is a farm field. Now, we've got the tall grass in front that needs to be harvested. We have the small little bitty grass back here that has to be harvested that you can barely see in the distance. I just want to make sure that we can see. And then everywhere around here, we have already had some harvesting, right? So we have some clippings from our raffia that we just cut. We got all kinds of different size clippings here. And that's going to be the top dressing on top of the sveg, on top of the, um, the Akadama finds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut up all of this raffia to lay down on the farm field. So give me a little bit to do that. So we're sprinkling some of the, uh, the, the fine particles of cut hay from this hay field. This gives us the nice color of hay field. Might cover up some of the dark, some of the dark uh, Akadama when it gets wet look. Then again, we're pretending this farmer has taken care of most of his field. He's just got a couple little patches left. So some of the pieces are probably a little bit too big. I certainly cut them up in small pieces I could without cutting myself. And we got some nice little pieces parts here. And again, whether it's a cut size or just for the look, there we have some hay in the field, not to be mixed with our grass up here on the hill. I wish I had this a little bit higher still. I suppose I always could do it a little bit higher, but that'll be the next planting, the next iteration. So let me look at this with you and see what I got here. So we've got all this hay that's fallen down and uh, the machines took out and we got little pieces here. I can keep working on this and cutting some of these big ones into smaller ones so it looks a little bit more realistic. A couple people have mentioned doing something with HO scale from the railroad world so I, I did do that and I got myself one of these and here we go. This is the farmer, uh, maybe left his, uh, his take here. He said, come pick that up later because he had another run to do. Something came up on the farm. So there's the big hay bale. And there were a couple of big hay bales that were um, on the top of there that I took off because I wanted to have a couple of big hay bales in the foreground because these hay bales are in the foreground and they're a little bit bigger. But then, back here, we have our little hay bales that are every, every, so, uh, every so many feet here. Um, so we're going to put our hay bales here, and we'll put one here, we'll put one there. I shouldn't throw them on the ground. Put one here, put one there, and we have one here that he's dropped, here that he's dropped, and maybe even here that he's dropped. He's got a bale there, a bale there, a bale there. And we got one more back over here. So these kind of go every other a little bit here. And I can put another one maybe right as far as that. that maybe it's a little too close to the other perspective one. So we can stop right there. So let me come around and see. I've got two more bales of hay. So maybe we have one here. 
And we have one here that you can't really see as much. Okay, let's come back and do the reveal with you. You got to see it before I did. So you're driving down the road and you see this farmer. He's got this hail bale thing going on. And he's got uh, some hail bales, bales of hay right there, the round kind. And so right there are the big bales of hay. And then if you look further onto the um, landscape, you've got all these smaller hay bales. And from my perspective without the camera, the camera's not going to show you as good as what I can see. But I've got a couple big bales up front, and then they get pretty small back there. So it's pretty nice. If I had a medium size, it'd be nice to have a medium size. So I put that right there and there, and i got a little gap there. And then there's the small ones back there. So he's, he's harvested that, harvested back there, and there's a little bit of hay in the background. Uh, maybe that's not even viewable back there. It's just a little bit. It depends on what we're focused on. Oh, look at that. So there we go. The only thing we don't have is some hay in here. So we might want some hay in here. We could put a couple hay bales here and here. That would be kind of nice too. Again, to kind of help distinguish that this is all a hay field, we just got a little bit of hay that's going to cover up some of that uh, akadama. We got this square hay field right off the road. There we go. Now we've got some hay all the way on this side as well. And as we go along, we can get rid of some of the thicker pieces if we need to. Some of the stuff here that's flying on this hay that has to be harvested here. I almost should have left this a little bit taller so you can see it better. But when you see it with the naked eye, you can see it better than what you're seeing on camera, I do believe. Okay, so now the sphagnum moss. So I've got some sphagnum moss from the cabin. And I'm not going to sift this. This is actually not completely dried. It kind of got a little bit of moist here. There's a little bit of greenness to this as well. But I'm just going to use my scissors again to cut this up like I just cut up the, uh, the uh, hay with the, with the raffia. And so we're just going to do this by hand, I think, a little bit. And then we're going to place some in here. Now I don't want to give it a lot of water because the tree has been watered, but I want to get this a little bit tamped down right here so it settles it just a little bit for you. It starts to get used to being down and wet. So again, this is more the forest floor, the little tiny bushes and grasses that might be growing on the forest floor. Starting out as sphagnum moss. We'll see if it turns into any green color to make it look like it's kind of uh, got some underbrush. It's a little bit different texture than the, uh, than the hay laying on the ground. A little bit of different texture than the hay bales, but not much similar colors, but we do have some uh, greens in here, which is kind of nice. There we go. This will, of course, hold on to even more moisture. So that's my biggest concern with this uh, landscape, is the moisture level. If this road is still holding moisture and all this sphagnum moss is going to hold moisture, when is there anything going to dry out here and let these roots chill for a little while and relax, right? Here we go. All right, let me come to your side over there. See what we're looking at. Oh, we're losing light. It's getting late at night. Let's go see what we're seeing now. We'll give it a 360 from this proposed front, which is long and narrow, the opposite of what we typically do. 
So here is the uh, view from this side. We've got our little figurine here. We've got our uh, hay bale truck that uh, the, the, the farmer left, excuse me, there for the moment. Going to come down the road and maybe go deliver some hay. Maybe going to put some more hay bales on top. We've got a couple big hay bales in the front and all the small ones in the back. And we've got the sphagnum moss to give it a different kind of texture than the hail cut up on the farm. So we've got a lot of pieces, parts floating around. But then there's a, kind of a triangle look or the angle look. This is the angle I liked on Steve so much when you looked at Central Park. We come around here. And now here's, this scene can also kind of work. Um, but we've got bigger, hay, smaller hay bales here and bigger ones in the back. So then it starts to not make sense as much for perspective. And then the forest, it has some perspective from left to right, but that looks kind of odd, right? So this isn't the best perspective. And uh, some viewers were talking about that, and I totally understand that. That's why I wanted to keep this as the central. This will be my tree. You're driving down the road, and you see these narrow uh, bands of farmland. Well, they're pretty big in the car, but... So there we go, and then there's that kind of front this way, where you see everything head on. We bring it back this way. If you were coming down this side of the road, it'd be a different uh, perspective because the trees all get bigger. So that doesn't work so much. And then you're looking through the neighbor's yard, through onto your uh, farmland. We've got a nice forest brew in there. Who knows how thick that's going to be and how far foliage will grow on this. We do have some itty bitty buds on this one right here. Down here there's an itty bitty bud. Super tiny one up here. And of course these have some growth, so it's kind of fun. So there we have the Landscape Challenge Part 4 coming to a close. However, I do have some more goodies. When I ordered my hay bales, they came in square bundles and they came in round ones. So what I thought I would do too, is I thought that the farmer might leave some uh, a little bitty, the smaller versions, and because they're square, and a lot of times people stack them up, I'd figure I'd make a stack of hay bales. So if I put these like this in front of this tree, and I lay them out, onto this surface of hay and then we go ahead and we make a pyramid shape oh there we go gotta be careful really moving around a lot This is where we have to get the, uh, the tweezers out. Now that one's just gonna, it just, one just wants to fall in there. So we'll put that one there. We'll put that one on top. Put that one on top. There we go, there we go. Okay, how many do I got here left? I can put one here. All right, then we can put one up higher and higher, and higher, and higher. It's an okay stack. Now what I could do, of course, is I could glue these all together separate from this uh, landscape and then bring it over to the landscape. But just for fun, because I have them right there, there's a stack of hay. Now it's not the direction that you can see it, but if you look carefully, down by the right side of that tree, we've got some more hay bales, and they almost look round from the side, so that's kind of fun too. Now to see them more neatly, I could put them this way right here, so you could see some hay bales that way, like he did some square ones and some round ones. So let me bring that to the front so you can see that stack of hay, kind of somewhat neatly stacked right there. Kind of fun right there. All right. So I gotta see if this uh, muck is gonna dry off ever. And if it doesn't dry off, the reason why it's not drying off is because this is a very flat tray. There's not a lot of gravitational pull to get rid of this water and it's just gonna sit in there and soak and it's not gonna dry out very fast. So I won't have to water this uh, forest as often as maybe other trays for sure, or other, other pots for sure. And I don't know if this road will ever dry out. Um, and if it doesn't, and I want it to, I might have to dig this all up which would be kind of a bummer, but we'll dig it all up. We'll lay a, maybe a little plastic liner on here, and then we'll put that uh, uh, the muck back on there, or just the um, Akadama rocks, 
And then um, when I water the rest of this, some re residual water will get in there, but it won't be like soaking wet from the bottom where the Akadama or the, uh, the rest of the bonsai mix is uh, on there. So I am really close to this finality. The only thing I wanted to add was another possible figurine of sorts. So I've had a whole bunch of uh, recommendations. I asked for people's opinion and uh, we've got some uh, bear recommendations, we've got some deer recommendations or predictions I should say. Um, not sure which figurine we're gonna go with here to make this thing complete, but uh, I think we're awfully close. Awfully close. So I'm gonna ponder that. I'm gonna go ahead and pick out some of the uh, hay that's blowing all over to the grassy field and just clean this up a little bit so the hay isn't there on the spots that I don't want it. There's our rock, we'll uncover the rock. I wanna make sure that rock is seen. I might put a different rock in there. If you've noticed, I picked more of a reddish brownish rock and right now with the dark green grass that's wet, you don't see the rock as much. So I've thought about changing that into a lighter colored rock. Of course, the only problem with a lighter colored rock is I have a lot of light colored uh, hay. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta breathe more lightly around my, my thing here. Yeah, I've got all this hay that's super light and tan and, and, and super soft in color that if I did the rock that color, that would look a little bit weird. So I think the darker red might stick. I might see if I have some other fun rocks that have a little bit different coloration. Um, if I go too dark, it'll blend in with the grass too much. So I'll take a peek at that. And I can pull off some of these real big hay pieces that are just too big here. They don't make any sense. Um, and we'll keep the little ones in there and I can always trim up some more little pieces and throw the little pieces on there as well. I did experiment with putting some tire tracks in here. Um, you can't see them on camera, but there's a tire track set right here. Um, I'll have to make them a little bit deeper and try it when it's a little bit drier because it just wanted to get my tires on the little car I used all dirtied up. All right. So I think that's enough plunking and picking and playing right now. Let's bring it back to your view right here. This is the long, unique view of, of a bonsai penjing, something we don't see very often. This is my landscape challenge, and I'm gonna be contemplating some final touches here. If I have one or two more things I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a closer look at the tree, because I did notice in the tree when you look at it, uh, on film and you see at the, the middle of this tree where it starts to spread out and get the width of the tree that looks like a little bit of possible reverse taper. So we want to make sure that that can be uh, maybe taken care of earlier rather than later. Um, but right now we are 90% there. I'm going to take a little moment here to see if there's some else, some other things I'm going to add to this and then we'll wrap it up. This is the landscape challenge part four and we have about 90% of this boy, bad boy where I wanted it to be. All right, let's take a moment to uh, research and see what I've got around the house. I thought it'd be a good idea to put a little sphagnum moss on the side of the pot by the small skinny road. So I was able to take a pointy tool and just kind of shove it down between the pot's edge and the Akadama gravel road. And then after I got from the front to the back, trimmed it up with the scissors so it looks like it's uh, tall weeds perhaps on the side of that country road. And then after that, I was able to take some of my moss. And so I put that down the middle of the path to have that image again of a country road where there's grass in the middle and road where the tires hit. And though that makes this view still very, very nice, twist this thing around and that view looks pretty, pretty cool. And then we come over here. And earlier while I was down here, thinking about if I should do an extra uh, weed trail in the center uh, path there, I glued these hay bales together. So now I can put these anywhere I want if I want them on this side so they're further away from the other view. We have some options. And if I thought it'd be better to put them this way, back there in the distance. The farmer put some hay bales back there. Perhaps we put them up here by the edge of the field. A few small touches here as we wind things down. 
We have come to the conclusion of the landscape challenge. But before we go, I have one more piece to add, and then we'll give it a 360 spin. Let's add that last element right now. The landscape challenge complete. Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to have an RV. Go around and travel, park the RV, see some sights, and not stay in a tent always. So in doing my research, I found a couple of HO scale things, thanks to Tom for suggesting that. And I had thought about that from my old railroad days with my dad. And uh, we got the hay bale to the right, and we've got the 1970-something wagon with the classic uh, little short RV in the back. And there is the landscape challenge. Yes, I am going a vertical depth of field with the big oak tree in the back with a little bit of grass out there and that rock. You got the hay bales down there. And we'll give it a 360 degree spin here. I put a little brown background back there to hopefully pop it a little bit more. But let's give it its final spin. So as we move to the right, kind of a neat image right here, this kitty corner, you can see both the car and you can see the hay bale starting to come in uh, the front there. And we spin this around and then this of course is the traditional view of a bonsai pot. And we can still see the car coming down the road, we got the hay bales here, and we, you know, not too terrible there, but the perspective isn't as good from this side because we've got that slant there, it looks better from there from the uh, side I showed you first. This is kind of cool out here. We see the car in the distance. Not a, not a bad perspective right there. But the trees get bigger further away, so that doesn't make sense. So here we go. We have about three trees that have not shot out some leaves, and it's this one right here and this little one there. We got another one in here. This one keeps leaning to the right. And we got uh, one right here that I think is dead. Everything else has leaves, but there's the back. As you're looking from the farmer next to you, his perspective through your wind barrier there. And we come across back to this side where we have our landscape challenge finale. We can zoom on in, close that image right there. That is going to wrap up the landscape challenge. If you noticed, I didn't mention this earlier, that everything has leafed out except for those three I guess I pointed out to. But we've got some leafing out here on the Zelkobas and the, the Aspen there. And um, it turned out okay. I'm pleased with the result. Um, I will maybe do a cabin scene down the road. Thanks for all those uh, suggestions. Did think about that quite a lot. But this hay bale in the fields and this kind of oak tree out there in the distance just uh, was enough of capturing my years going up to the cabin and all the road trips I've taken. Really fun to see some of those great big majestic trees out in the field. And so this perspective is what I had in mind, especially when I had a pot that wasn't very wide um, or deep, I should say. It's certainly wide enough, but not deep enough. So we're going to keep putting some spray on here. I've got a sprayer now that I can spray water on all the sphagnum moss and hopefully that greens up this summer. And uh, I've got the little dirt road on this side with the little grass down the middle. Um, the farmer's using that to move his hay. And of course we have the uh, vacation family there going uh, on a trip to uh, a nice campground or somewhere in, in, in nature out in the woods. So thank you so much to Candace for uh, sending the challenge my way. Um, it was a tough challenge and I stewed a lot about it and with it. Uh, thanks to Steve. Um, his backyard bonsai, uh, holy cow, I still am just enamored by Steve's uh, diligence and uh, dedication <laughs> to all that brick lane. And so we got a little bit of uh, diligence here with trying to get this hay here. Turned out okay. We may modify this as we go. Maybe there's a little bit too much hay in the field or maybe they need to be smaller pieces, parts, but it'll grow hopefully throughout the course of the next couple of years. So I think my uh, nomination, I don't know if he's been nominated yet, but my good buddy up there in Alaska, Billy, uh, the Bald Yeti, um, I challenge you 
to the landscape challenge and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Now Billy uh, the Bald Yeti is known for his new videos now that he has that he shoots over the whole course of a year. So I don't know if you can do it that way or not and keep us uh, on the edge of our chair for a full six months to a year or so. But uh, the Bald Yeti, it's all yours. Uh, I challenge you with your landscape. And that'll wrap it up. Um, we're in spring break. I've done a couple of repots, finished the landscape, and boy, the work continues. We've got a lot to do before I head back to school uh, in the first part of April there. So hey, take care of you. Take care of all your bonsai. And we're going to catch you very soon, probably with a couple of repots. <laughs>